What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more gear blocks and today I built something really really cool because I was sitting there thinking to myself and I was like alright so like a real tank uses a single engine right but somehow it still generates tank drive from a single engine like tanks don't just have an engine for each side it's one engine it's always spinning forward and yet using a transmission they can reverse the directions of the track and so I, I thought about how to do this and I decided to make myself a version of this and then we're gonna put it in a tank. We're gonna we're gonna try and build a tank today and put a combustion engine in it. See what happens. No idea. But anyway, so this is what I built, right? And it's a pretty simple system. We've got one little continuous servo motor here. So let's turn this on. So we turn this on, and you can see it spins that center axle, and our wheels don't do anything. But our motor is constantly running, right? So this could be our idle motor. It could, you know, our, our RPMs could be going. Our motor's not gonna stall out. Hence tank right and then if we press w we've got some clutch gears on the top there and then regular gears on the bottom if we press w it engages those two gears well two of them i don't remember which two um and and that's what causes it to go this way we press s it engages the other two causes it to go in reverse you can see the way it works is really simple We've got a stack of two gears, and then we've got a stack of three gears. The gears are all the same size. Like, you can see the two-gear stack, they're identical size, and the three-gear stack is the same size. So the drive axle and the wheel output have the same rotational velocity. Um, but WS, right, S goes backwards, W goes forward. A causes one of them to go left, and then the other to go right, and D causes the opposite thing to happen. So, with that, we should be able to build a car, right? Or a tank, right? I don't know how to do the suspension portion of it yet. Uh, and then, of course, we press B, it activates these disc brakes, because these are on clutches, so when you're not pressing anything, uh, these wheels are actually free spinning, so we activate some disc brakes with B, and you can see our motor is still, it's still constantly spinning, right? Like, it just, it never stops. We can just turn that on and off. We'll have to put a throttle on it. But anyway, I have no idea how this works in real life. My, uh, I, I thought in real life, a real tank only has like one drive gear, the same way like an excavator does. I am pretty sure it's only the very front. I'm, I'm probably wrong. There's somebody who knows a lot about tanks. I know that's going to correct me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure it's like the front, the big front gear thing, like the big front gear thing is the only one that's, or is it the big back one? No, maybe it's, a, it's got to be the big back one, right? Because that's where the motors are. Anyway, I'm pretty sure there's only one gear on the whole tank track, like one wheel that drives the entire track around. I think that's how it works. But uh, because we don't actually have tracks in this game and we have to do everything with wheels, um, we're going to basically just build like a series of gears along the side and overlap some wheels and try and turn it into a tank and see what happens. First thing, we're just going to clear off all the excess nonsense. There we go. So now we've got our tank transmission. And essentially what I'm going to try and do is extend... Um, like just gear this all the way to the back, right? Like just gear, 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 gear. So we're gonna build... Oh, that's right. I had to put a half plate there to attach the brakes. Okay, that's fine. So let's actually... Yeah, though, let's leave that in the middle. And then we're just gonna build... We'll build this out to the width of the, where we want. Maybe like that. It'll be the total tank width. We don't really need a hugely wide tank tread. Again, we're going to just see if this even works and we can actually get something to drive. Uh, we do need to put a gas engine. But yeah, I really just wanted to try and build this transmission. I don't imagine this is how they work in real life because this is four clutches. This seems excessive. Like you have, and, and like these are linear gears, but I feel like they wouldn't use four clutches on a tank in real life. But they definitely have a single rotation point turning into multiple, you know, rotation so I, I don't know how they do it I, I'm, I'm curious it's an excavator would have to have the same although an excavator oh wait a minute an excavator might do it with electric an excavator might just be big electric drives because the excavator yeah because the excavator tracks are on the bottom right they're disconnected from where the engine is like the engine on an excavator is on the part that swivels on the top and then the the tracks are on the bottom so they've got to be just big electric or big hydraulic, maybe. Maybe they're big hydraulic motors that get pushed by... It's probably hydraulic, right? They get pushed by a big hydraulic fluid pump. And then that spins around a big thing, which makes the motor turn, which drives the track. Anyway, let me know what you guys... Uh, what, you, what you know about tank tracks in the comments down below. I have no idea. So, anyway, we're going to do this. Um, this is still too wide. We're going to go like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not get distracted thinking about excavators and construction equipment. Because I definitely want to build that in gear blocks, even though we don't have hydraulics, it would still be really, really cool. Um, so now we have to just build, like, all our extra axles is essentially where it's at. Um, and what I'm going to try and do, we're going to use motorcycle wheels. So we got to go like that, right? And then, oh, these are like one and a half. This is going to be weird. I want to, like, offset 
a wheel so they're overlapping so there's no gaps, right? That's sort of the plan. Yeah, like that. And then we have to put a gear, 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 all the same size, and then that goes to there. Perfect. Uh, and then we're going to actually offset all this out one more, just so we don't have any... It looked like it was some weird clearance thing. I think the tires are like one and a half blocks wide, not one. Yeah, I think they are. There we go. So gear, gear, gear. And then we'll just repeat this back ten times, I think. We'll like we'll do, I think, six wheels per side. Alright, and just like that, I actually put seven wheels per side because uh I realized with six, like the the you didn't want the inlet one. I wanted it to end on the outlet one. But you know, it's really simple. So we've got a series of gears, you know, an extra spacer gear in between. Each one's on its own little axle, right? The whole thing is, you know, it's all connected. It all looks great. I think it'll work. Um, I took the motor off because I'm kind of dumb, but that's fine. Uh, we're going to spawn, of course, the classic uh, I-4 and just get this attached to it. So my thought is I want to leave the centrifugal clutch on the I-4. Um, just because when these clutches are switching gears, if there's any momentum that happens, I want the centrifugal clutch to not, like, stall out the engine, right? So if we're gliding forward, for example, and we slam it into reverse, we don't want the engine to stall out. We want the centrifugal clutch to apply torque to this shaft in the opposite direction. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen. I have no idea. I'm, I'm talking, I'm pretending like I know that this is gonna work or it's not gonna work, but I honestly have no idea. Let's, uh, reduce that to there. Let's just get a sleeve of sorts that we put on this axle um, to connect this up. This isn't exactly like, you know, the most beautiful design in the world. We're just trying to see if you can actually make a tank powered by a combustion engine because I was sitting there thinking about it and it was really bothering me. I was like, how the heck did they do this in real life? There must be a way, right? Like there must be a way that tank manufacturers make stuff powered by a single engine. So there we go. So that's powered up. We can remove this pin now. Now we need to connect this. Does that just connect nicely? It does not because we're on the half block. That looks like it probably interferes too, but I can do this uh, and then we can just extend that. No, that's a full block. Okay, hold on. So we need a half plate. I, I kind of made a mistake by building my engine on the half block. So you always have to drop your axle by a half, or or you have to do... It doesn't matter. It's really... It's not a huge deal. It's just kind of funny. Um, and then actually, yeah, we'll just put another plate here. And, and there we go. That should... Wait, is that... That's attached to both, right? Yeah. Now if I unfreeze, right? Okay. That spins up. Okay, we can throttle it up good sign. What do I press W now? Oh. Uh. Oh, yeah. Something's happening. I press... So, I got... Uh, hold on a minute. I gotta put a seat down because it's, um... I can't freeze my, my own movement. <laughs> I keep... I press W and it, it moves me. So, let's put a seat on this first. That's kind of cool that that actually works. I don't know which way is forward. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. So I guess we'll just we'll just slap a seat on this end and see what happens. Put a car seat. I don't know. Let's assume that's forward, right? Maybe maybe I built this correctly. Here we go. So G turns it on. That's fine. Uh, can I zoom? I can't zoom out anymore. Okay, so W, and then the clutch is just spinning because basically the way this works. I realize I didn't explain it, but the way this works is really simple. Uh, we can set clutch controls, right? So this clutch has two controls, W and D. So W will engage this clutch, or D will engage this clutch. And then this one, same thing, S or A will engage the clutch, right? And then this one, you know, it's the opposite. S and D engage this clutch, and W and A engages this one. So that way you can get it to go left, right, forward, back. And then we've got brakes with B, and uh, F is our throttle. So if I press W, oh my god, that's forward. Perfect. And then if I press F, it should, see, it's, it's very slowly rolling against the clutch. And then if I press F, oh wait, no, it's backwards. Is it? Or is that just my frame rate? I think we might have to gear this up too. We probably have made an extremely fast tank. But let's, uh, let's, let's, you know what? Let's do a real quick freeze up here. Let's save this thing as tank test number one. Because why not? We're making tanks now. I love that. And then we're going to remove the pin. And we'll just drop you to the ground. Thank you. 
currently invincible, but that's fine. I think it's going to be way too fast, but here we go. So throttle up. Hold W. Okay. I am doing that. If I, I'm holding W and pressing F to throttle up. I think we need to gear this a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Yeah, like a lot, a lot. Look at, like we're barely... We're rolling, but the engine should be revving way higher. Because we should be torquing. Like, we shouldn't be... Oh, took like a lift there. Alright, and it is backwards, so that's fine. We'll flip the seat around. So now if I press S... Um... It's trying to go the opposite direction, but it can't because we have momentum. we got to brake first. Now press S. Okay. So that works. We definitely need more torque. For sure. We're going to gear this like crazy, so brake again. Now press A. And throttle up. Yeah, it doesn't have enough to, to spin us. If I press D and throttle up. Yeah, okay. We need we need torque. We need torque. Alright, we're going to gear it up and see if that helps. Alright, here we go. Now I've got it geared at a 1 to 5. So it's an 8 tooth going to a 40 tooth. And this will actually flip the direction. So now we're going to go forward. So this will be good. But I don't know. It's a 1 to 5. So hopefully this helps us... I think it honestly needs to be more than that. Well, maybe not. There we go. Now we're a tank. Alright, now let's try turning. Oh, okay. Let's hold A. Oh my god, it turns. Or this is holding D, sorry. It does turn. Can I pivot turn now, though? So it can turn when I have momentum, but now if I just press, like, if I hold... It doesn't have the low end to, like... Like, I can... Okay, I can rev it up. And then if I hold D... <laughs> it kind of works. It needs more, like... It needs, it needs to sit higher in the... It needs more gearing, honestly. It just needs a bigger, like, an even bigger gear. It needs to sit just higher in that rev area. So we just need to make this as big as possible. We're gonna take this and just do this. Grab that, grab this whole, whoops. Oh, you're still attached. Here we go, break you down there. There we go, grab you. Just transplant that off there. We're gonna put that literally the biggest gear. What can I do, nine? 72, sure. Is that gonna hit the ground? No, perfect. Yeah, we're gonna literally go just as big as freaking possible here because uh, apparently, yeah, that's what we that's what we need. There we go. Perfect. All right, that meshes up. That's nice. That's nice. The engine is really high up. I mean, it is a tank. We have to overcome all this friction, right? I mean, real tanks use steel tracks, which might help. There we go. All right, so that revs up no problem. So now if I hold A. It, like, kind of wants to do it, but it also wants to, like, try... Oh, my goodness. I'm an idiot. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. There's... There's settings for all this. Yeah. Cornering grip, and I think we just need to lower these to, like, the minimum on everything. Because we have a lot of wheels, so we don't need individual wheels to have a lot of friction. We need them to slide, like tank tracks would. All right. I'm going to try this. Let's see. I don't know. Maybe this is the solution. All right, absolutely zero friction now. Oh my god, yes. Let's go! It's a tank now! <laughs> All right, hold, 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 hold D. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, single engine driving a tank. Let's go! I can't believe this works. All right, now let's hold W. Let's go. Alright, it, it kind of redlines really high. I love this. It's so great. It doesn't do too well, though. Like, oh my god, this is amazing. You gotta, like, w with the way these clutches work, and maybe this is just me. If I hold W, for example, I'm going forward, but now if I hold W and D. It won't turn to the right because I think it like I think it still activates both clutches at the same time. Like 
If I go, this one would be W and D. Yeah, and I think if you hold W and D, it actually turns this off. Like, I don't think this acts as an OR gate. I think it acts as like an XOR. Like, it's like, oh, you're pushing both? Like, it must be zero. I'm not sure, but it just seems like if I try and, you know, hold both of them. We're going to go over to those mountains, by the way. Actually, let's go to the mountains back over here. But yeah, if I try to hold two controls at the same time, it doesn't actually, uh, it doesn't work. So I might have to come up with a better transmission system for that. Maybe something using centrifugal clutches that automatically engage. Okay, now our, our gear ratio might be a little steep now. I mean, I don't care. It's a tank. It's not really meant to go fast. But yeah, I gotta kind of like, if you want to turn, you gotta sort of like wait. And then you gotta throttle. That was the other thing too I noticed. Right now I got my throttle set to like the F key. So I have to hold W and then I have to like press F to throttle up my engine to actually get us going. And I looked and there doesn't seem to be a way for me to put the throttle on like a slider. So like I can hold the value like F would increase it let's say and some other value would decrease it. Which is not a big deal. But it is kind of funny that I have basically a tank now. I love this. This is so cool. We gotta figure out how to put suspension on a tank. Make like, I guess it's not a tank. It's like what, an, it, what are they, armored personnel care, APCs or whatever. The six wheeled or eight wheeled, you know, armored all wheel drive things. I can't believe this works though. Awesome. All right, I turned off vehicle collisions now, or uh, part invincibility, I mean. So just to make sure, you know, it's always a good check to make sure your vehicle doesn't like break itself apart. And uh, can we, oh, this is an interesting problem. It's struggling to do the old. Okay, I would like to turn to the left, please. There we go. Yeah, just, just torque her up, torque her up, and then turn. Yeah, I definitely need some suspension set up. That would help if we had suspension on all the wheels. And we definitely need to design a motor that's like built for torque, like a nice big V8 that idles low, you know, and just outputs a whole ton of torque. Or like maybe a, a V16 with a low idle. Something that's really, really low and torquey and just lots and lots of low end on it instead of this like high end racing motor. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I think it's pretty cool that this tank transmission actually works. I don't think this is how it works in real life. I'm going to about guarantee that tank transmissions in real life are probably, uh, probably a little bit more robust than this and not using four clutches. But I am curious to see what you guys think in the comments down below and let me know what other things you want to see in gear blocks. I mean, this is a pretty cool idea. And uh, I'm glad that we could turn one rotational motion into two different drives. And that's kind of a cool setup. All right, before we go though, I'm gonna do one last thing. Let's do, let's do the bump test, because we might as well. Might as well see what this is all about. All right, here we go. Uh, let's go forward, slowly, turn, forward. This is gonna suck because we have no suspension, but like, might as well try it. Oh wait, actually, uh, that's right, it wouldn't suck, would it? Because the bumps are just, they're just gonna, all the wheels are just gonna turn the bumps into a flat, uh-oh. Hold on a minute. Yeah, they'll just, they'll just turn the bumps into an actual... Um... I don't know how that just happened, but it did. We're, we're, like I said, we did turn off invincibility, but I don't, that wheel just decided to leave us. It's fine, this works. It's kind of amazing. It's actually, I really, I'm, I'm actually a really big fan of this. I gotta figure out how to do a version of this with suspension and like I said, better combustion engine. But yeah, this is, this is pretty cool that this actually works. And I'd like to figure out a version where I can hold two different directional keys at the same time. Like W and A would actually let me turn. But again, I think we're we're shutting the clutch off. Like we're turning it on and then shutting it off again. So it's it's actually canceling itself out. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you all next time. This tank is awesome, it's so cool.